Hello friends, my name is Tushar and today I'm going to talk about Fenvictory or Binary Index Free. Before going into the details of what Fenvictory is, let's look at the use case which Fenvictory is trying to solve. So Fenvictory is used to get prefix sum of an array. For example, if I'm given an array of seven elements from zero to six, so Fenvictory will help me answer queries like, what is the sum from zero to four? So the sum from zero to four is three plus two, five, five plus six, 11, 11 plus five, 16. What is the sum from uh, 0 to 6? So the sum from 0 to 6 is uh, 16 minus 115 plus 217. So queries like this is why I use Fenwick tree. What are the other alternate solutions if we did not use Fenwick tree? One solution is to keep a prefix sum based array. So for 0, it's the sum till 0 is 3. For 1, the sum till 1 is 3 plus 2, 5. For 2, the sum till 2 is 5 plus 0, 5. Sum till 3 is 5 plus 6, 11. Sum till 4 is 11 plus 5, 16. 16 minus 1, 15. And 15 plus 2, 17. And this would also help me answer the same query. What is a sum from 0 to 4? And you directly go here and that's 16. What is a sum from 0 to 6? And that's 17. But the problem with this approach is if there are many updates in the original array, it takes, for every update, it takes O of n time to update this, uh, this array. So if, if an array is large and if there are many updates in an array, this prefix sum based array doesn't scale very well. Another possible alternate is to use segment tree. If you don't know what segment tree, tree is, I have another video going over the details of segment tree and you can watch that video. The problem with segment tree is it's slightly more complicated it takes, in worst case, 4 of n space to store segment tree for n, array, n elements in an array. And in worst case, it takes 4 of log n time to search into a, to do a range sum query in a segment tree for an array of size length n. So this is where Fenwick tree comes into the picture. The space it takes to uh, store Fenwick tree is O of n. The amount of time it takes to search into Fenwick, uh, Fenwick tree is O of log n. The amount of uh, time it takes to update every element in Fenwick tree is O of log n and the amount of time it takes to create a Fenwick tree for the first time is n log n. Next, let's look at the implementation details of Fenwick tree. So now I'm going to create a Fenwick tree based on a given array. So I'm given an array of 11 elements starting from index to 10, uh, starting from index 0 to 10. So my Fenwick tree will go from index 0 to 11, one more, ele one more node than the actual array. So let's see how, uh, how I built this tree right here. So this is a conceptual tree. My actual tree will be stored in a form of array, but this is easier to understand, which is why I have it this way. So 0 is a dummy node and doesn't store any information, and rest of the nodes 1 to 11 will store the prefix sum. Why I have the tree this way? Let's look at it. Why is zero is parent of two? If you look at the if you look at the binary representation of two, that's one zero, and if you flip the rightmost set bit, it becomes zero zero, which is zero, which is why zero is parent of two. If you look at binary representation of eight, that's one zero zero zero. If you flip the rightmost set bit, it becomes zero 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 zero, which is again zero, which is why eight parent is also zero. If you look at ten, binary representation of ten is one zero one zero. If you flip the rightmost set bit, it becomes 1, 0, 0, 0. And this is 8, which is why 10's uh, parent is 8. Uh, let's look at 11. 1, 0, 1, 1. If you flip the rightmost set bit, it becomes 1, 0, 1, 0. This is 10, which is why 10's 11, 11's parent is 10. So hopefully it is clear how, why our tree looks like this. To get the parent, all you have to do is get the binary representation, flip the uh, rightmost set bit and then it gets a parent. Later on we will look at how you can efficiently flip the rightmost set bit. Now let's try to fill up this tree here with the prefix sum information. One thing to notice is that every number can be represented as a sum of power of 2's. For example 10 is 2 raised to 3 plus 2 raised to 1. 11 is 2 raised to 3 plus 2 raised to 1 plus 2 raised to 0. 5 is 2 raised to 2 plus 2 raised to 0. So Fenwick tree uses this information to store the prefix sum. Let's see how this works. As I said, 0 is a dummy node, so the only information it has in its node is 0. Let's start with 1. 
1 can be represented as 0 plus 2 raised to 0. So what I'm saying is, in my original array, starting from index 0, the sum of next one element will be stored at 1, so 3. And I'm indicating that the range zero, sum of range 0, 0 is stored at 1. Let's look at 2. 2 can be represented as 0 plus 2 raised to 1. So again, starting from 0, the sum of next two elements will be stored at 2. So 3 plus 2 is 5. And this is uh, 0, 1. Let's look at 3. So in my original array, starting from index 2, the sum of next one element will be stored at 3. So that's minus 1. And this is... Uh, one, uh, this is 2, comma, 2, 4, 4 is 0 plus 2 raised to 2. So starting from 0, the sum of next 4 elements will be stored at 4. So 3 plus 2 is 5, 5 minus 1 is 4, 4 plus 6 is 10. So 10 is stored at 4. And this is uh, 0, 3. Let's look at 5. 5 is 2 raised to 2 plus 2 raised to 0. So starting from 4, the sum of starting from 4, the sum of next one element will be stored at 5. So 5 and this is 4, 4. 6. 6 is 2 raised to 2 plus 2 raised to 1. So starting from 4, the sum of next two elements will be stored at 6. So that's 9. And this is 4, 5. Let's try to fill up 7. 7 is 2 raised to 2 plus 2 raised to 1 plus 2 raised to 0. If you combine this two, starting from 2 raised to 2 plus 2 raised to 1, so starting from 6, the sum of next one element will be stored here. So that's minus 3. And this is storing 6, 6. Let's look at 8. 8 is 0 plus 2 raised to 3. So starting from 0, the sum of next 8 elements will be stored at 8. So that's 5. 5 minus 1 is uh, 5 minus 1 is 4. 4 plus 6 is 10. 10 plus 5 is uh, uh, 15. 15 plus 4 is 19. 19 minus 2 is 16. And 16 plus 3 is 19. So that's 19 and this is 0, 7. 9. Uh, 2 raised to 3 plus 2 raised to 0. So starting from 8, the sum of next one element will be stored here. So that's 7. And we'll say 8, 8 is here. 10. 2 raised to 3 plus 2 raised to 1. So starting from 8, the sum of next two elements will be stored here. So that's 9. And that's 8, 9. And finally, 11. 2 raised to 3 plus 2 raised to 1 plus 2 raised to 0. So starting from uh, 8 plus 2, 10, the sum of next one element is stored here. And the range is 10, 10. All right. So hopefully, you understood how I created this tree. I did not show you the efficient way of creating this tree, but hopefully this gives you an idea how I filled up the nodes of this tree uh, using the prefix sum. So next, let's look at how we are going to search into this, uh, into this binary index tree. So our aim is to get the prefix sum given a range. So for example, give me the prefix sum from zero to five. So we want to get this prefix sum 0 to 5. So to get the prefix sum, you got to start from node 6. Because the end is 5, you start from 6. You go to node 6, you take that value 9. So the value here is so 9. Plus, you go to its parent. So to go to the parent of 6 from 4, all you have to do is flip the rightmost set bit. So you come here, so that's 10. And then you flip the rightmost set bit and you reach 0, so that doesn't add anything, so 19. So 19 is the sum from 0 to 5 in my original array. So let's look at another example. Let's try to get sum from 0 to 9. 
So 0 to 9. So since this is 9, I'll start from the 10th note in my uh, Fenwick tree. So I start from 10. So the value here is 9. Plus I go to its parent. So that's 19. And then I go to its parent. So that's 0. So that doesn't add anything. So this is 28. So the sum of 0 to 9 will be 28. Why this works is, let's see why it would work. If we're trying to get the sum from 0 to 9, uh, you, we know that this 10th node here is storing the range 8, 9. So 8, 9 of this 0 to 9 is stored at 10. Also, we know that its parent 8 is storing the range, uh, sum of range 0 to 7. So sum of range 0 to 7 is stored at 8. So the sum of range 0 to 9 is the sum of range 0 to 7 plus 8, 9, which is 8, 9 plus 19. Let's look at another example. So I was trying to get the sum from 0 to 7. So I start from 8. Uh, so I was trying to get a sum from 0 to 6, for example. So I'll start from the 7th index. So 7 stores the sum of 6, uh, 6, 6. So this is coming from 7. So that's minus 3. Then I go to its parent. So that's 6. And 6 is storing the sum of 4, 5. So this is coming from here, and this is 9. Then I go to its parent, 4, and 4 is storing the sum of 0 to 3, and that's 10. So this value here is uh, 16. So this is how we get the sum of 0 to 6 by getting the sum of 0 to 3, getting sum of 4 to 5, and getting the sum of 6. The amount of time it would take to get the prefix C will be the height of the binary, height of this uh, binary index 3 and in worst case the height of this binary index 3 will be O of log n. So the amount of time to get the prefix sum will also be O of log n. Next let's look at how we are going to actually create, how we are going to actually enter the values in this binary index 3 in an efficient way and how we are going to update the values in this binary index 3. Let's quickly look at how we are going to get a parent of a node. So I have the steps right here. Get this two's complement of a number and it and this with the original number and then subtract that result from the original number. Let's try to get a parent of 7. So binary representation of 7 is 1, 1, 1. Two's complement of 7 will be 0, 0, 0. Flip all the bits and then add 1 to it. So that's two's complement. So that's 0, 0, 1. Then and this 0, 0, 1 with this 1. So that's 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1. So this is uh, 0, 0, 1. And then subtract this result from here. So 1, 1, 1 minus 0, 0, 1. So that's 6, which is why 7th parent, parent is 6. Let's try another example. Let's try to get binary representation. Uh, let's get, try to get the parent of 10. So binary representation of 10 is 1, 0, 1, 0. Two's complement of 10 is 0, 1, 0, 1 plus 1. So this is 0, 1, 1, 0. Subtract and it and this with this. So this becomes 1, 0, 1, 0, and then 0, 1, 1, 0. So this is 0, 1, 0, 0. And then subtract this from this. So 1, 0, 1, 0, minus 0, 0, 1, 0. So this is 1, 0, 0, 0. So that is 8, which is why 10's parent is 8. To get the parent, or you do need to do th these three steps, and that is an O of 1 operation. So to get the parent is O of 1 operation. Next, let's look at how we're going to fill up this table. This Previously in the video, I showed you how I filled up this binary index tree from the original array. Let's try to do that efficiently this time. So we know that 0 doesn't store any information, so the only thing it has here is 0. Let's start from 1. So when I'm trying to fill 0, I try to fill 0 plus 1, so 1th node in my binary index tree. So I come here, I make whatever values here, we add 3 to it, so this becomes 3. But updating this one is not enough. You have to also get, update all the other nodes which could be affected. And to get those nodes, we'll use this formula get next. So let's start from one. So one is, uh, let's, the binary representation of one can be written as 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Assuming that we are storing one byte to store this information. So two's complement of one is 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, and 1. If you add them together, this becomes, uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. And if you add this to the original number, that becomes 2. So you go to 2 
and you whatever value is set at 2, you add this number to that. So this becomes 3. Then we find the next number that needs to be updated, next node which needs to be updated. So we repeat the same process again of get next. So two's, uh, comp 2 can be represented as 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. 2's complement of this is uh, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, uh, 0, and 1. And if we, uh, 0, 1, so 1, 0. If we uh, and it with the original number, this becomes uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. So this is 2. So we add this 2 to the original number, so we go to 4, and whatever number is there, we add uh, this 3 to that guy, so that becomes 3. Then we again use the same formula, 4, 4, and get the next one, which will be 8. So this will also become 3. And then we go to use the same formula to get the next after 8, and that will be greater than 11, so we stop the process. So we have updated 0 here. The amount of time it took was O of log n. If you look at, if you look at how, how, much, how many uh, times, how many nodes I had to update here. Let's start with 1. So now, I go here. So I'm going to update 1 into my, ori into my binary index 3. So for 1, I go to 2. So the value for that 2 is 3. So 2 plus 3, this becomes 5. And then I need to update everything after next of uh, 2. So next of 2 is 4. So this becomes 5. And next of 4 is uh, 8. So this also becomes 5. And next we are getting using this formula. So next, let's look at, and after next of 8 is uh, greater than the length of this binary index 3, so we stop. Let's look at 2. So for 2, we go to 3, so this becomes minus 1. Next, we'll see which is the next number that needs to be updated. So the next of uh, 3 will be, binary presentation of 3 is uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. So 2's complement will be 0, will be 1, 1, 1. 1, 1, 1, 0, 1. If you add them, it becomes 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. So this is 1. So you have to add 1 to the original number. So 3's next will be 4. So you go here and this becomes 5 minus 1, 4. And then 4's next is 8. So this also becomes 4. And then 8's next is 16, which is outside the range. So we stop. Then we go to uh, 3. So to go to 3, we come here and we update whatever is at 4 plus th uh, 6. So that becomes 10. So now 4's next is 8. So this also becomes 10. And 8's next is 16, so we don't do anything about it. So next, let's look at uh, 5. So we go here, uh, let's look at 4. So we go to 5, we put 5 here. If you apply this same formula, 5's next will turn out to be 6, so this becomes 5. And then 6 next will turn out to be 8, so this will become 15. And then 8's next is outside the range. So next, let's look at, uh, let's update this 5 here. So we start from 6, we put 9 here. Then 6 next is, uh, uh, 6 next is uh, 8. So this becomes uh, 15 plus 4, so 19. And then 8's next is uh, a really big number. It's 16, which is outside the range. So let's try to update this guy here. So, uh, so this is, uh, so we are updating 6, so we go here and this is minus 3. Then 7's next is also 8, so this becomes 16. 19 minus 3, 16. And 8's next is? Uh, uh, yeah, 16 which is outside the range. Then we go and update 7. So we are updating 8, so th 3 plus 16, so this becomes 19. And then 8's next is outside the range. Then we go to 8. So we come here, so this becomes 7. So for, uh, when I'm updating 8, I go to 9th node. So this becomes 7. 7's next, 9's next will turn out to be 10, so this also becomes 7. And then tens next will be outside the range of this index tree. So then we go to uh, nine. So nine, so we update here. So this becomes nine, seven plus two, nine. And then it's outside the range. And then finally, 10, we're going to update 11. So this becomes three. And then the 
11 snacks will be outside the range of this uh, of this binary index tree. So this is how we would actually update. This is how we'll actually create our binary index tree for the prefix sum of the original array. All you have to do is apply this formula. If you are going to update 7, go to the 8th node, then you put the value there, add whatever is there plus this, plus this value, and then they get the next value. And if that next value is in the range of this binary index 3, update that guy, and then keep getting next until we are outside the range of this binary index 3. So again, the amount of time that would take is O of log n. So the amount of time to create this binary index 3, if there are n elements, will be n log of n. Since we are doing every, op for every operation, it's taking O of log n time. And since there are n elements, the amount of time it will take to create this binary index tree will be n log n. Finally, let's look at how I'm going to update a value. Say I came over and I updated 3. So this 3 becomes, uh, so the value at 3, so 6 becomes, say, 9. So the difference between them is 3. So I need to update this 3 all over my uh, binary index 3. So again, I start from 4. So I go to, f so 3 plus 1, 4. So the difference here was 3, so I add 3 here. So this becomes 30. Then 4's next is 8. So we go here and then this becomes 22. And then 8's next is outside the range. So again, the amount of time it took to update it, every, any element will be O of log n. Let's try another number. Let's try to update 4. So we go to 4, so we go, so let's try to make this 5 as 6. So the difference here is 1, so we go to 4, so we add the difference here, so this becomes uh, 6, and then we go to 5's next, which will, be, which will be 6, so this becomes 10, and then we go to 6 next, which is uh, 8, so this becomes 23, and then 8's next is outside the range of the binary index 3. So as you can see, the amount of time it takes to update any uh, value and into this binary index tree is O of log n. So this is all I have to talk about the Fenwick tree or the binary index tree. The link to the code will be in the description section of the video. So you can just go to the link and see the code and it's exactly the same as I discussed right here. Also, you can uh, check out my, uh, my GitHub link, github.com mission piece intro wiki. And you could also subscribe my YouTube channel, youtube.com user to show right 2525. Thanks for watching this video.